right, guys, got a couple more chapters of One for the Murphys today. We're on chapter 16. We're going to read chapter 16 and 17 today. Chapter 16's title is, If I Throw a Stick, Will You Go Away? The doorbell rings. I can feel my armor strengthening. This meeting with Tony over this dumb project has had my stomach in knots since it was assigned two days ago. Tony's hair looks even blacker in the sunlight. She steps past me. Miss Murphy comes into the foyer. Well, hello. You must be Tony. Must be, Tony says, looking around. Miss Murphy clears her throat. Would you girls like anything to eat before you get started? Tony smirks. No, thanks. She turns to me. Let's get this over with. She heads toward the stairs and points. Your room up there? Yeah. Tony takes three steps and turns back. What are you waiting for? A train? By the time I get upstairs, I know I'm going... I, I know I'm through taking garbage from Tony Byers. I've prepared for a reason, for the room's decor. I'm staying here temporarily because I don't care. Can we get on with this already? She looks upward. God, I hate Reuben. We agree on that, at least. She sits on the bed with a bounce and opens her backpack. Look, I say, why do we have to be at each other's throats? We have to work together on this thing, and besides, I haven't even done anything to you. I have friends. I don't need any more. I fold my arms. I never said I wanted to be friends. Get over yourself. Can we just start this, please, she asks. I stare at her t-shirt. It's the one with the bright green letters that read wicked. So what's with the shirt? Is this a warning to people about your personality? She doesn't answer. Are you some sort of witch or something? I'm through taking your garbage, even if you have to threaten to turn me into a toad. She laughs at me and wiggles her fingers. I'll use my special powers to turn you into a superficial boar. Poof! Hey, it worked. I hate her. Look, witchy poo, I say. I don't care about the grade. I'll take a zero and not blink an eye. But remember, if I take the hit, if I refuse to work with you, you'll take the hit too. You seem like you actually care about your grades, and I don't care what kind of a freak you are, I lean toward her. You don't scare me. She takes a deep breath, and I'm happy that she knows I have her. She looks down at a page in her notebook. I'm not a witch, you idiot. Have you been living under a rock? Well, yeah, basically. She laughs in a way that makes me begin to feel foolish. Haven't you ever heard of Wicked? It's a Broadway show. The, the Gershwin in New York, I might add. The Gershwin in New York, I might add. I'm sure I care. It's the best show on Broadway ever. My God, she looks at me like I have a catfish coming out of my nose. You've never heard of Elphaba? What's an Elphaba? Elphaba isn't an it. She's the Wicked Witch from The Wizard of Oz. And Wicked is the story of how she and Glinda the Good Witch were friends when they were younger. How they each became who they are. And Elphaba is just completely amazing. Figures you'd like the Wicked one. But she's not Wicked. She's perfect. Sounds like a rash. Like, I have a severe case of Elphaba. Oozing, pus laden, maggot filled. You should be struck by lightning. You should obviously have a flying house land on you. That is a, what's it called? That's an illusion. If you thought of that before me, make sure you mention that in your Flipgrid post. It's an illusion. Having a flying house land on you is an illusion to The Wizard of Oz. If you've never seen The Wizard of Oz or read The Wizard of Oz, then... Um, you may not know that, but in The Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch has a house land on her from a tornado. So, cool illusion there. Carly, she's full of these illusions and the um, similes, metaphors. She's awesome. Okay? You obviously don't understand. I laugh. I mean, call me Captain Obvious here, but do you also think Alice in Wonderland is a real person? Not the same, she says, her face turning red. Well, actually, witchy poo, I think it is the same. Can you say fiction? I lean toward her. Say it with me now. Fiction. We stare at each other and she looks away first. That's one for me. So anyway, she begins, who are we going to do for this wretched project? I'm thinking Stephen Sondheim or Stephen Schwartz. Let's make up someone that, that doesn't exist and convince Reuben that he does. How about Jim Nasium, who brought sports to the masses of Antarctica? I can see she wants to laugh, but she won't. Stephen Sondheim and Stephen Schwartz are two Broadway musical geniuses. Stephen Schwartz wrote the music to Wicked, for God's sake. It's my dream to meet him. I'd like to meet Madeline Langle. I guess I'm just an idiot. You said it, not me, she says, amused. Well, actually, you did say it. 
She shrugs and we stare. Look, I say, some Broadway genius is no different than Rainer's pitch to do George Lucas and we all saw how thrilled Reuben was with that idea. He didn't say no, he just said that Rainer had to argue it well. She grunts, of course Rainer couldn't argue his way into a free movie. Okay, that's another thing we agree on. Don't act like you're my friend, she says. You have the imagination of a doorknob. Wear the right clothes, say the right things. She looks like she smells something really gross. You're nothing, just a little clone. She thinks this because of the clothes Miss Murphy got me? I stand straight. And you? You're obsessed with this elephant butt, or whatever her name is. Elfaba. I'm on my guard, just in case she swings. I think I prefer elephant butt. The name Elfaba was created from the L. Frank was created from the name L. Frank Baum. The, yeah, yeah, the author of Wizard of Oz. You're not the only one who knows anything. I fold my arms. Look, I couldn't care less about this. Let's just do Stephen What's-His-Face. You choose. I just want to get it over with so you can take a long walk off a short roof. Fine, she says. We'll do Stephen Schwartz. I already have tons of info on him. I'm sure you do, I laugh at her. Elephant butt. She, we divvy up our responsibilities and agree to work separately. She leaves with the door slamming behind her while I wonder if she's always like this. I'm reminded of how the flying monkeys in The Wizard of Oz always freaked me out no matter how many times my mother said I was being a baby. Anyway, no monkeys, no Tony. I can finally relax. Sorry about that. I had to plug in my computer to finish this read aloud and that is also why the angle is different because I had to move my computer so it would reach the plugin. So that's why we're here. And let me get back. We're on chapter 17, and it's called Bad to Worse to Unthinkable. On Saturday morning, Daniel screams downstairs. Not a regular scream. Something that you feel in your guts when you hear it. Mom, come quick. There's something wrong with Michael Eric. Mom! I hear Miss Murphy say, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like someone's punched her hard in the stomach. I'm in the kitchen in a breath. Michael Eric is lying on the tile, curling his arms and arching his back. His head is pulled to the side. He shakes hard. Oh my God, Michael, Michael Eric, my honey. Miss Murphy drops to her knees and holds his head. He's having a seizure. Why is he having a seizure? She looks up at me, but I cannot pull my eyes from him. Carly, she says, yanking me from my trance. 911, now. I run to the phone to dial. Mommy, what's wrong with Michael Eric? Daniel wails. Mom, what's wrong? Adam sucks his thumb, which I've never seen him do. 911, what's your emergency? I've learned to stay calm in the middle of chaos. A little boy is having a seizure. I answer question after question when I want to scream for them to just come. I watch Miss Murphy cradling my cleric, rocking back and forth. Her forehead touches his. He has stopped shaking, but he lies limp. Miss Murphy strokes his sweaty blonde hair. She's pleading. No, no, no. I tap my foot and count. Somehow I'm able to count, listen, and pray all at the same time. After millions of questions, I finally hang up. Carly, Miss Murphy says through her crying, call Jack, call him at the station, and tell him to come meet us at the hospital. I dial the number, but another firefighter answers. I need to speak with Jack Murphy. It's an emergency. The man leaves the phone, and it isn't long before a panicked Mr. Murphy is on the line. Hello? Hi, Mr. Murphy. It's Carly. Michael Eric is sick. Miss Murphy says he's having a seizure. We called an ambulance. Oh, my God. His voice cuts me in half. Miss Murphy's forehead touches Michael Eric's again. Oh, my God. Please. No, she sobs as they rock back and forth. Daniel kneels, rubbing Michael Eric's leg. Adam stares, terrified at his mother. Miss Murphy looks up at me. Her voice sounds urgent. Tell Jack to meet us at St. Francis Hospital. I put the phone to my ear and begin to speak. He interrupts. I heard, Carly. I'm on my way. When the EMTs arrive, they take Michael Eric's blood pressure, temperature, and check his eyes with a light. They listen to his heartbeat. Finally, they put him on a stretcher and wheel him out of the door. I follow the stretcher and Miss Murphy. A lot of the neighbors stand on their porches. She turns around. Carly, honey, I know you're upset and I know you want to come, but the boys probably shouldn't be at the hospital. Would you mind staying with them here? I force myself to nod as I look past her while they load my Eric into the ambulance. A little bump under a white sheet on a huge stretcher. She pats the side of my arm. Thank you. I promise I'll call as soon as we can. She kisses each of the boys. Don't worry. Be good. Love you. She pats the top of my arm. She turns to go. Wait, I yell. I have to get something. Carly, I, I really have to. Please, I yell, already running upstairs. Please, one second. I jump back down the stairs and hand Mr. Longneck to Miss Murphy. Please give this to Michael Eric. He should have it. Her smile is so sad. I will, 
She gives me a quick kiss on the cheek before running to the ambulance. Her kiss has left some of her tears on my face. I reach up and touch them with my fingertips, and I stop shaking a little. And that's where we're going to stop for today. Hope you enjoyed today's read aloud, and be sure to tune into the Flipgrid discussion. Have an awesome day.